Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmadu wa nusalli ala Rasulil Karim amma ba'd. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat petang. <coughs> Saya nampak ramai yang apa yang agak kurang selesa sikit waktu sekarang kan? mungkin saudara-saudari telah berada di sini sejak pagi kan. Ditambah juga semalam tapi macam mana pun saya ucapkan tahniah lah kerana saudara-saudari masih lagi bersama dengan kan, apa, peserta-peserta dalam seminar ibadah ruksa ibadah dan isu fik ini. Dan bukan senang untuk apa untuk berada pada hujung minggu. Kan. Saya untuk saya datang daripada Ampang Jaya ke sini satu jam meredah jam kan hari ini hari, hari Sabtu. Tapi macam mana pun saya rasa um, saya, saya tengok saya lihat di kalangan saudara-saudari daripada latar belakang yang berbeza ya. ada pelajar perubatan, ada juga bukan pelajar perubatan okay. jadi saya punya topik yang diberi ialah lebih kepada penjagaan pesakit tenat <coughs> dan euthanasia uh, saya lebih berminat untuk men, uh, menceritakan pasal penjagaan pesakit tenat sebab euthanasia merupakan uh, komponen dalam penjagaan pesakit tenat So izinkan saya uh, apa present my presentation in English. I hope kan um, for the participants will be able to understand ya. Yeah? Okay, sebelum uh, before I start I think uh, in detail uh, allow me to define what boleh nampak eh what is what what does it mean by death. Tadi Dr Zuhairi telah cerita dengan lebih panjang lebih apa uh, agak panjang tentang autopsy, pembedahan mayat orang yang mati. Jadi saya rasa uh, jatuh kuasa telah arrange program ni cantik lepas uh, autopsi so, sepatutnya penya, apa, penjagaan pesakit yang nazar atau mati baru autopsi kan tapi tak apalah it's quite relevant juga so apa apa yang dimaksudkan dengan death tu kan dari segi saintifik kalau you all baca saya, saya punya abstract I will go first in terms of uh, first with regards to the scientific basis then only then I will uh, I will go on to discuss about the Islamic component of death and dying yeah um, for for those who are familiar yeah, with uh, with death uh, yang daripada perubatan eh, death actually is defined as irreversible biological event that consists of a permanent cessation of the critical functions of the organ and Uh, organ, organism as a whole so the key word here di sini adalah merupakan cessation and of the critical functions of the organ yeah? the concept allows survival of isolated tissue but require loss of integrated functions of various organ system and brain is the essential and critical function for the body so and ini merupakan definition dan untuk mendefinekan kematian death ni And dalam konsep Islam a person is biological dead when the three attending physician attends to a totally damaged brain And kematian uh, otak ya yeah? brain death with a unresponsive coma apnea and absence of catholic uh, reflex so bila ada tiga keadaan and dan, uh, dan dan tiga physicians can confirm and uh, a person is biological dead ya yeah? And this has been agreed by Islamic Organization for Medical, Medical Sciences Symposium in 1996. Yeah? Okay, ini, what do you mean by brain death? Eh, tadi Dr. Zuhairi dia tak nak uh, tunjuk gambar. Saya tunjuk gambar untuk uh, stimulate you all lah sikit. Yeah? Uh, ini ini uh, keadaan sakit yang accident. Eh, dan dalam keadaan accident usually uh, damage to the brain and brain death. Whether the permanent absence of cerebral, cerebral and brainstem function. Saya harap tidak diedarkan lah dalam uh, media sosial kan. Uh, Baru-baru ni heboh kan pasal gambar apa uh, The late kapal sing telah diedarkan di media sosial So saya rasa benda tu tak perlulah kan. Saya juga dapat gambar tu agak Agak orang kata tragic jugalah kan orang dah meninggal kan But I, I hope for the sake of teaching saya keluarkan ni Tetapi pihak-pihak janganlah edarkan ya, kepada orang yang berkenaan Ya yeah. So when we talk about process of dying ya. Yeah? So dying ni dia boleh terbagi kepada tiga. The normal process slow natural. It will take between 50 to 70 years ya. Yeah? Uh, accelerated death dalam case uh, macam seseorang dia ada cancer ya. Yeah? 
atau penyakit-penyakit kronik diabetes atau hypertension ya yeah, this accelerated or immediate or sudden death dalam kes kemalangan jalan raya macam saya terangkan tadi AMI kan uh, accelerated death is uh, sakit pasti yang yang akan terang yang yang berada keadaan nazak kan dan ini merupakan pesakit yang uh, biasanya uh, apa immediate ya yeah, uh, accident dan sebagainya Okey, dari segi perspektif kita, saya rasa kematian ni kita kena kita apa? Semua orang ter, uh, setuju. Kan? Kita sebagai orang yang beriman kita kena yakin dengan kematian. Ini adalah ayat surah Al An'am satu kedua, kan? Yang menceritakan yang yang apa? Yang beritahu tentang kematian. Kan? Secara, maksud dia dialah yang menceritakan kamu dari tanah, kemudian ditentukan ajal kematian kamu dan satu ajal lagi yang tentunya di sisinya iaitu masa yang telah tetapkan untuk dibangkitkan kamu semula pada hari kiamat dalam pada itu kamu masih ragu-ragu tentang hari pembalasan okey begitu juga surah an-nuh ayat 3 ke 4 kan eh, marfumnya sembahlah iaitu sembahlah kamu kepada Allah dan bertakwalah kepadanya serta taatlah kamu kepadaku supaya Allah mengampunkan bagi kamu sebahagian dari dosa-dosa kamu dan memberi kamu hidup dengan tidak terkena azab sehingga ke satu masa yang tentu maka segeralah beribadah dan bertakwa kerana sungguhnya ajal yang telah ditetapkan oleh Allah SWT apabila sampai masanya tidak akan dapat ditangguh seterusnya eh, hingga ke akhir ayat ya ha, ini surah al-araf al-araf ayat 33 33 hingga 34 yang mana ajal apabila ma sampai masanya tidak sesaat pun eh, boleh dilewatkan ya atau didahulukan Okey, ini surah Al-Anbiya kan? Al-Anbiya ayat 30 35 kan? Al-Mulk ayat 1 hingga 2. Okey kan? Saya ingat ya, kan? pelajar apa? Saudara-saudari kan? Uh, Arif kan tentang ayat-ayat Quran tentang kematian ya. Okey, what about truth of death? Inilah hakikat kematian sebenar. Ya. Death does not mean the ultimate end. Kehidupan kita di dunia ni ibarat mengembara. Eh, mengembara yang mana kita akan pergi ke alam yang seterusnya akhirat eh, That is the beginning of an everlasting life Bila seorang tu mati, maka bermulalah kehidupan yang sebenar eh, Apabila dia masuk ke alam bar, alam kubur, maka disitulah ke, eh, bermulanya yeah? The real life which has no ending, eh, yang tak ada penghabisan What will perish is only the body Badan sahaja yang akan eh, binasa tetapi Roh dia, soul dia akan sentiasa kan, uh, hidup. So sekiranya seseorang tu menganggap kematian tu satu nikmat, maka tidak ada masalah baginya. Ya, uh, ini ke, ke ini ke, 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 ke apa kelebihan kematian? Yang mana ke, kematian tu merupakan satu hadiah. And death is a gift, is a delight. Sesungguhnya kematian itu menghapuskan dosa. Dan sebenar kematian itu adalah ketenangan. Dan apabila seorang mati, maka hilanglah kan? hilanglah kerisauan dia dunia. Kalau di, di dunia ni, dia susah, dia tak ada makan, tak ada minum, dia sakit. Apabila dia mati, maka segala kesengsaraan, penyiksaan di dunia ni akan hilang. Itu merupakan kebahagiaan pada dia, ketenangan pada dia. Jadi kita kena lihat daripada sudut yang positif. Dengan syarat kita usaha untuk kan? mendapatkan kejayaan di, dunia, kan? di akhirat. Ya? Do not welcome and death with sorrow. And laborer be happy when you are released from work. And dibarat orang yang buruh yang telah selesai kerja. Your grief shall turn into joy when you shall sleep in peace. The dead have such comfort and peace they do not want to rise again. And masa untuk dia berehat. Orang di dunia ni mereka mengikut perintah Allah ikut cara Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam segala larangannya diikuti ikut perintah dia maka apabila dia mati kan maka dia Allah akan bagi balasan yang sebenar kejayaan untuk dia kan gaji untuk dia macam mana apa macam mana buruh tu dibagi gaji lepas habis dia kerja begitu juga gaji untuk kita sebenar apabila kan mati menemui kita kan baru ni juga saudara-saudari mungkin terbaca kan dalam social media ini Allah nak tunjuk. Di dunia ni Allah boleh tunjuk. Macam mana seorang wanita yang single mother who pass away. Tahu tak kan? Tahu kan? Single mother who pass away because of cancer. Allah tunjukkan liang dia punya kubur bercahaya. Saya saya saya, 
kita tengoklah kan kalau betul benar ni ini Allah nak tunjuk kepada orang yang hidup di dunia kan benda ni benar perkara ni benar kan janji Allah tu benar kan saudara-saudari maka kita kena usahlah ke arah itu ya eh? okey apa what are the perceptions of death unfortunately kan manusia kan patience kita orang yang menghadapi sakratul maut orang yang sakit kan their perceptions of death is death is painful bila bila nak mati dia rasa kesakitan mati sebab dilihat orang yang mati dalam keadaan kesakitan mengeluh kan death is undignified death is a burden to others orang yang dalam keadaan nazak dia burden orang kan terpaksa jaga dia and death is a loss of life and not knowing the status after death This is in general the perceptions of death and eh? for the, to the people the fear of death or fear of to leave the womb of his or mother and he or she feels that the womb of the mother is the place of comfort and she's not he or she not able to perceive the vastness the comfort the beauty the joy and pleasure of this world sebelum kita lahir ke alam dunia kita rasa po ibu itulah yang paling selesa betul tak Uh, semua makan minum semua bila ya, kita dapat dalam po ibu tak perlu kerja tak perlu usaha takut bila nak keluar dunia tapi bila kita masuk ke dunia kita tengok segala kenikmatan itulah juga bila kita nak mati ni kita risau kan uh, apa akan berlaku di alam seterusnya uh, tetapi sebenar kan, orang yang beriman bertakwa beramal soleh Allah akan bagi kejayaan kan uh, lebih daripada dunia ya yeah? Okey. Orang yang dalam keadaan nazak, a dying patients, they, they they have this physical incompetency, stage of physical incompetency yang mana mereka tak mampu, tak ada daya, tak ada upaya, kan, as a result of complication from end organ damage, um, for example, end stage renal failure, cancer who has uh, uh, spread and to various organ, infect infections, metabolic derangement and surgical problem. These are very common things as healthcare providers we are seeing yeah people who are dying from terminally illness yeah and the process of dying in the dying person and yeah? uh, usually mereka dalam keadaan sakit pain they are in pain especially in cancer patients and yeah? they have cancer pain yeah? mereka tak tak lalu, lalu nak makan and yeah? mereka tak ada selera yeah? mereka kurang appetite and uh, they have in, uh, organ problem incontinence nausea vomiting respiratory problem yeah ulceration they cannot care for themselves and of course from psychological effect and uh, is they are sad they are grieved their anxiety and they are delirious so everything and uh, uh, which i mentioned is the uh, the process of dying a person uh, they will encounter and these are the psychological impact and as you all know they are shock denial they have a problem shock denial anger bargaining depression and acceptance eh? okay so what five physiological tasks that can be gratifying and therapeutic so seorang yang mati kalau mereka ada kan, ciri-ciri seperti ini maka mudah untuk dia menghadapi sakratul maut forgiveness feeling forgiveness finishing unfinished business relinquishing relinquishing roles celebrating special day saying goodbye so they are looking forward untuk kan untuk meninggalkan dunia ni kan so that actually as a therapeutic untuk mereka menghadapi kan sakratul maut so the important aspect in the care of terminal patients and for for doctors kita kena anggap bahawa human body to is a trust an obligation for us to seek a cure and patients should right to know and they themselves yeah so there is a gay aspect islam the issues that i want to bring up here is living will and advance directive so kita kena menggalakkan our patients kan yang mana kita dalam penjagaan kita to have their living will and written or oral statement which people make when they are mentally competent bukan dalam keadaan mereka delirious they should be competent in order and then they should not be influenced by and by a treatment decision yeah so but but the patients must be adequately informed and able to understand and retain information relevant to the decision and to assess it and arrive at a free choice so provided patients has been explained in detail about the treatment the benefits and the do and um, the benefits uh, the um, the kebaikan dan keburukan dia 
Yeah? Uh, so bila uh, they have done that, so they are able to to to, to give their decision, uh, to put in their living will and advance directive. Uh, what do they want? Yeah, especially when they are in coma. Okay, what about nutrition and hydration? Selalu di di, di apa diungkitkan perkara ni. A person who are dying dalam keadaan and they are they have only few days or hours of life. Should we give nutrition and death? So and that is when death is inevitable, as determined by a team of physicians, patients should be allowed to die without unnecessary procedures. So kalau memang dah kematian tu tak dapat nak elakkan, so and kita kita tak perlulah eh, nak nak provide prolong prolong treatment, yeah. But however, ongoing medical treatments, contoh untuk pain management, comfort, symptom control perlu diteruskan. And mechan mechanical support can be withdrawn. Yeah, so patient should be treated with full respect, comfort measures, and pain control. No attempt to withhold any nutrition and eh? and hydration. And okay, what about mechanical life support? And uh, ini eh, bila sosok ada kasus seorang perlu eh, bergantung kepada alat and eh, support. So, dari segi aspek uh, from Islamic Judicial Council, mereka telah berkumpul dan bersetuju iaitu once treatment has been intensified to save a patient's life. Uh, sekiranya rawatan tu dah maximize dah. And, uh, dan dan apa dan kematian tu tidak dapat nak elakkan. So, life saving equipment cannot be turned off unless physicians are certain about the and uh, inevitability of death. And barulah and uh, and equipment apa mechanical life support boleh and di withdraw ya yeah? islam law permits withdrawal of futile and disproportionate treatment on the basis of consent of immediate family members who act on the professional advice of the physician in charge of the case so and in the, it is the process of life that is to be preserved not to the process of death okay what about DNR? Selalu kita dengar pasal do not resuscitate orders. Yeah? Kematian tidak dapat, nak, kan, seperti mana saya menyatakan tadi, kematian dalam Al-Quran tidak boleh nak dielakkan. Yeah? Okay. So death and an event under complete control of God, no so can die except by Allah's permission. Yeah? According to Syariah, person considered death when either of the following two signs is noted. The heartbeat and breathing stop completely, and doctors decide that this cannot be restarted and as I mentioned earlier, function stop immediately. So general consensus in Islam about DNR must, is still evolving and decisions of medical futility only to be determined by doctors case to case basis. So in the absence of terminal illness or futile care situation, so Muslim patients should seek medical treatment including resuscitation until recovery or stage of the terminal illness or vegetative state is reached. So, selagi they are not at the stage of terminal illness, selagi itu, kan, rawatan must, mesti diteruskan. Kan. Uh, but once they, they, they reach the state of terminal stage, doctor telah decide, so masa dalam keadaan itulah, kan, tidak perlu any active resuscitation. Yeah? Okay, what about euthanasia? And, I mean, definition by definition, euthanasia is a deliberate intervention with the express intentions of ending a life to relieve intractable suffering. Niat dia baik untuk mengurangkan sakit. Tetapi, and, di sebaliknya, there is a deliberate intervention. Yeah? Uh, it's a, it's, which is a mercy killing. And di, di seluruh dunia adalah illegal. And, except for in Netherlands and Northern Australia. So, active euthanasia, walaupun voluntary or non-voluntary, are not permissible. Tidak dibenarkan sama sekali under any circumstances. Dan kita tidak boleh, we can, must not be confused with passive euthanasia. Yang mana, passive euthanasia, kita, uh, we do not continue the treatment because there is no hope. And in that situation, where the doctor decides death is inevitable and no hope, we do not continue the treatment. And active treatment and that is accepted, but it is, and it which is a passive euthanasia, but that is allowed unlike active the intent the intention to kill. Okay, giving patient assistance to die is illegal. What more important is we must provide open discussion, find out kenapa they minta reasons why they uh, ask for euthanasia. 
Kebanyakan keadaan mereka tak tahan sengsara yang mereka hadapi maka sebab itulah eh, mereka minta euthanasia. As I mentioned, fear of the dependency, burden, yeah? uh, experience, dilihat orang dalam keadaan sengsara. So maka, eh, uh, apa? because of that, they ask for euthanasia. Sebagai orang yang beriman, kita tidak eh, dibenarkan dan tidak boleh request for that. Okay, saya saya I have about five minutes actually. Mungkin saya I hope uh, secretary can allow me eh lambat sikit lah. Kan? Benarkan kan apa kalau Prozaina juga benarkan kan uh, sebab tadi ada technical sikit nak tukar komputer eh. I won't take more than 15 minutes eh mungkin 5 10 minutes lah. Okay, before death family should be contacted. Uh, kita kena beritahu family kan gather call call all the all the children and when they are you know they are, when uh, wherever they are kalau boleh ya yeah? and it's good to have visitors sebab per, per, orang yang melawat pesakit ni um, dia bawa pahala uh, dia bawa rahmat kan uh, jadi memudahkan pesakit kan uh, untuk uh, dapat kebaikan ya yeah? and Quran recitation is desired muslim patients ask to be reaffirmed about their cardinal belief and kalau boleh you should have a, a proper silent room for the family and the patients together and and there should be a proper comfort kan yang mana mudah untuk uh, apa relatives kan, caregiver kan anak-anak uh, isteri dia datang untuk bersama dengan mereka yang menghadapi sakratul maut atau dalam keadaan nazar ya yeah? okay then after death uh, patients eyes should be closed body to be covered okay family may ask for body to be turned and face mekah if possible and and dan seterusnya adalah urusan eh, uh, apa peng, uh, pengurusan jenazah untuk pengebumian okey what is our role as a muslim physician eh, apa uh, kita punya peranan ya yeah? most important the manner where our patients live this mortal world allah mentions in holy verse come back you to the lord well please yourself and well please unto him enter you then among my devotees ya yeah, enter through my heaven eh? so the last moment of our life is very precious in whatever we or our patients live this world it should be the manner that the patient will be raised in the life year after the best way to live this world in the manner shown by our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for eh, for in his tarikah way lie the great mercy and blessing for allah subhanahu taala kita kena ada have a good expectations when a muslim is at the trance Trust of death, he is encouraged to have a good expectation for Allah. Sangka baik dengan Allah. Minta kebaikan. Hope for the blessing and forgiveness. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radhiyallahu anhu approach his eh, when when Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal approach his end, he sent for his son and asked him to read to him the hadis that induce hope in Allah subhanahu wa taala. And kita kena kan, apa um, berharap kebaikan dengan Allah subhanahu wa taala. Ingat mengingat remembrance of Allah. Someone at the throes of death is highly encouraged to read Quran and to remember Allah abundantly. This will bring solace, joy and peace of the mind. Satisfaction for the heart can be relief of distress, ya. Yeah? Ini semua makanan rohani, makanan hati untuk kita menghadapi sakrata maut. Thankful to Allah. And to be thankful to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and prove it with words and heart, ya. Yeah? Health and sickness are both from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sehat, sakit semua datang daripada Allah. Dan Allah juga yang menyembuhkan And his slave, we should submit to his will And he knows what is best for his slave yeah? And to make istighfar and tawbah And when his time is near A Muslim should make as much istighfar and tawbah No matter how sinful we are The doors of his mercy and forgiveness Stretch far greater and wider than our sins Pintu tawbah sentiasa terbuka yeah? Returning the rights of others When the time is near he should return as quickly as possible the rights of others and ask forgiveness from his wife his parents neighbors and 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 friends eh kita memaafkan eh memohon maaf make a will eh i mentioned earlier and menjaga salat dalam keadaan sakit pun kita kena jaga salat memang adalah menjadi peranan kepada family members untuk mengajar pesakit memberitahu telah masuk waktu salat walaupun dalam keadaan mereka berbaring ya yeah? Okay, advise his family. Advise to his family to the patient with his bad behavior. Advise to his family to be patient with his bad behavior during his illness. Mungkin ada sedikit kekurangan dia. Eh? 
Uh, they should be advised not to wail and be reminded of a hadith quoted by Rasulullah Sallam that person's soul is tortured should his family wail over his death. Therefore, they should not be the cause of decay's torment. Okay? Kesengsaraan si mati itu disebabkan oleh kan, oleh uh, saudara mara dia, perbuatan dia. Yeah? Uh, ini yang penting. Advice against act of bid'ah. And, uh, to advise his relative against act of bid'ah relating to his death rights and funeral rights and to emphasis on the point and on this point kadang-kadang kan semua dah mati dalam keadaan baik tetapi amalan-amalan perkebumian dan selepas mati tu boleh mendorong kepada bid'ah boleh kan menyusahkan pihak yang mati ya yeah? requesting his family to make doa to ask his family and relative to make doa for him even long after his death ya yeah? Okay, when the death is near, it is sunnah to face the direction of Qiblah, I mentioned. Okay, and, and, and we should read doa, oh Allah, make me life, should be alive, is better for me. Please give me death, should death be better for me. Ini doa yang disarankan. Okay, dalam keadaan the tension of death, ke, apa, uh, kesengsaraan sakratul maut, perlulah baca surah Yasin. Ya. Yeah? Uh, sama ada minta family dia baca yeah? Okay And then and, uh, A person who is close and loved by the patient Should be close at his side Mengajar dia yeah, untuk ucapkan kalimah La ilaha illallah yeah, Untuk meletakkan Keyakinan dia pada Allah SWT Hadrah Mu'az Ibn Jabbar radhiyallahu anhu narrated when, Who recites la ilaha illallah At the final moment of his death Will surely get into paradise Daripada Ahmad, Abu Daud dan Hakim To, to facilitate the soul to live of the body Hadha Aisha radiallahu anhu narrated Holy Prophet SAW clean his teeth with miswak kan? Bu, uh, uh, kayu miswak tu before passing away kan? uh, Hadha Zayed ibn As Aslam radiallahu anhu kan? narrated when all the good acts of the believer have been taken into account dah habis dah kebaikan dia and still run short of the requirement uh, ada masih lagi kan? kurang The death for him is made painful. Kematian dia dibuat uh, apa? Menjadi kesakitan agar ke, uh, agar segala dosanya diampunkan oleh Allah Swt. Sebelum dia masuk ke dalam syurga, eh? daripada ibnu Abi Dunya, daripada Hazrat Zaid bin Aslam radhiyallahu anhu. Okay, Hazrat Aisyah radhiyallahu anhu narrated Holy Prophet SAW to have said that for a believer there is a reward in everything and every severity of death is rewarded. Segala kesusahan kematian adalah pahala. So, in summary, death is a sure event for all living creatures. Medical limitations in defining death as cessations of tissue life and function. Our pers perspective of death as cessation of the worldly life and transition into bazaar. Not the end, but a beginning of an everlasting life in eternity. You need to realize the various process of dying and their significance. I would need to prepare for this sure event. And not only for us, but also for our patients and the ultimate outcome. Terima kasih. Okay, ada... Sorry, eh? Lima minit terlajak. So, question. Question and answer. So, I'm... Saya dibenarkan untuk select lah soalan. And saya nampak di sini ada dua soalan. Soalan pertama, eh? what is your opinion about the poor who cannot afford to get treatment from their serious diseases? Pandangan dengan orang yang susah. Kan? Okay. Um, okay, soalan kedua. Bagi saya fikir dulu. Eh? <laughs> in case of death in line, which method is preferred in Islam? Ni, ni death in line, D-I-L. Lah, kan? Non-active resuscitation or active resuscitation according to Islam? Okey, soalan kedua senang sikit lah. Death in line maknanya memang dah harapan tu tipis. Eh, prognosis wise tak ada harapan. So seperti yang saya cakap, eh, there should be no active resuscitation. Kita tak perlu dah nak menyusahkan orang yang si mati. Except memang ada harapan, eh, uh, maknanya uh, for example, the problem will not actually, uh, will can be can be helped in order for him to 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 stay alive dalam keadaan macam tu perlu for example infections we should treat the infections and but a person who already gasping dying so active resuscitation is not 
apa required here okay balik kepada poor who cannot afford to get treatment for their serious disease i would like to quote you know probably yang orang yang tinggal di kawasan luar bandar susah kan uh, so di Malaysia di Malaysia kita ada services untuk mereka yang serious illness maksudnya those terminally ill patients and but unfortunately it only available in the big city so in the rural area we do not have but of course kita, dia boleh rujuk kepada pihak kebajikan ada uh, sekiranya they need some assistant lagi segi lagi segi duit bantuan alat perubatan ventilator dan sebagainya kalau mereka perlu eh, di rumah so boleh dia boleh dia apa mendapatkan bantuan daripada pihak kebajikan kan biasanya doktor di hospital dia akan uruskan macam contohnya pesakit yang yang apa chronic lung diseases perlukan alat pernafasan ya yeah? oksigen home therapy so they are available uh, pihak kebajikan baitul mal ya yeah? ada menyediakan kemudahan itu okey saya harap soalan ini terjawab. Okey, wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih.